years of contemplating whether I should build my own dedicated PC for cybersecurity home lab and just everything that I do, I finally decided to invest the money and build my own computer dedicated towards cybersecurity home lab stuff and basically everything else. So in today's video, I'm going to be building my own computer and hopefully everything goes well. I'll be going over all of the specifications that I have chosen in this build and uh, well, yeah. All right, so for the last week, I've been waiting for my stuff in the mail. I've got everything that I need in this build. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this over to another room and get my desk set up for this build. So I got my equipment set up here on my brand new FlexiSpot E7 desk. More on this in a few moments. They sent it over kindly for me. And so I'm just gonna quickly overview the equipment and specifications that I got for this build. Starting out with the Intel Core i7 3700K. I ended up getting the Intel CPU chip set for this build. Um, I've heard it's reliable, it's good enough for what I do, and I'm also not a gamer, so I don't really need the latest and greatest in terms of CPU power, but just something that is sturdy enough. For my memory, I ended up getting the Corsair uh, Vengeance 3200 MHz DDR4 RAM. I um, rationalized not to get the DDR5 just because, once again, I'm not a gamer. I don't really need the latest and greatest equipment. I just need something that's a lot more powerful. Uh, so two of these sticks will make 128 gigabytes of RAM, which I am very excited about. I think this is what I'm most excited about in my build. So in addition, I have my MSI motherboard. I don't know what model number this is, um, but yeah, so it's DDR4 enabled. It has uh, Wi-Fi, which I really need. Unfortunately, right now, I do not have a direct ethernet connection set up in my room. So I need a strong Wi-Fi connection. For my graphics card, I ended up going with the Asus 3060 Ti. Uh, and now I got eight gigabytes of video RAM, I think it's called. And I, like I said, don't need the latest and greatest, just something that's pretty powerful. Uh, specifically for video editing, I need something that can help render my videos and, and make my experience just a little bit better and more efficient. So in terms of storage, I have three things. I have the Samsung 980 Pro M2, which is two terabytes, gonna install my OS on this one, as well as an eight terabyte Iron Wolf uh, NAS drive for just the HDD, just, you know, video storage and anything that I need, as well as a five terabyte Seagate extension hard drive for videos as well. Uh, so I'm pretty good on storage now. I definitely have run into the issue of having too little of storage for all of what I do. So for cooling and power, I went with the all-in-one Corsair uh, cooler for my CPU. I decided not to do a heatsink for this build. Uh, and then I also have three case fans here also from Corsair. So uh, hopefully this is good enough cooling. And then for power, finally, I have the Corsair RM850X850 watts. This should be good enough for my build and everything that I'm doing. And finally, for my computer case, I got the Corsair 5000D mid ATX tower case. Um, the reason I went with the 5000D is because it has two USB ports instead of one. Uh, so hopefully this will go well and smoothly and let's go ahead and start assembling this build. Before starting my build, I set up the FlexiSpot E7 desk and the C7 ergonomic chair to support my new cybersecurity setup. Since I'm at my desk often, I prefer to have both a sitting and standing option to break up my working sessions. Plus, standing can be healthier. So the FlexiSpot E7 provides a sturdy and reliable desk platform to support my big computer monitors and everything in between. I chose the hardwood texture and I really like the look at the desk. The desk comes with four programmable options along with an up and down arrow for different height adjustments. They have a sitting, standing option which is nice and really this desk provides everything that I need. All right so FlexiSpot told me I can put my whole weight on this. Let's see if that happens. Yep all good. In addition I also set up the FlexiSpot C7 office ergonomic chair. This chair provides a healthy balance between comfort and good posture. The best part about this chair is that most parts are adjustable including the lower back for lumbar support, headrest, chair height, and arm stands. 
The seat can be aligned with the body curve and is able to adjust forward and backward. This makes for a perfect fit while sitting at my desk and the chair didn't take too long to set up and provides a really comfortable seat for when sitting. So thanks to FlexiSpot for sending over the E7 desk, the C7 office chair. If you're interested, you can find more information using the link in the description below. All right, so on to my I started by looking up a YouTube video to follow along and build from to ensure that I was doing everything right. I unboxed the motherboard, unboxed the Intel CPU, and inserted the CPU along with the four RAM sticks and the M.2 Samsung SSD. I opened my computer case next and gathered all the necessary mounts to install the motherboard inside the case. Next was the computer cooling. So I unboxed the all-in-one or AIO cooler and installed the fans on top of the cooler. I then proceeded to attach the AIO cooler on top of the CPU chip. I had to mount a small little attachment in the back of the motherboard so that the cooler could attach to it. I then applied the AIO cooler to the CPU with its thermal paste and then attached the three RGB case fans to the front of my computer case. Next was power. I unboxed the power supply, located the CPU 24 pin power cable and the PCIe cables for the graphics card. I first inserted the Seagate HED into the back of the case, followed by inserting the power supply into the computer case and called it a day. All right, so it's day two and I definitely underestimated that the time investment it would take to build my PC here. I still have to install the graphics card as well as attempt to do decent cable management. And then I need to go into the BIOS, install my OS, the drivers, and really configure everything. Um, and on top of that, <clears throat> I think I may have screwed something up and I'm pretty worried about it. All right, so terrible camera angle and lighting here, but basically you can't see it, but my ninth JFP1 pin is bent. So I'm a little worried that what I've done here is a classic motherboard screw up, very beginner mistake. And if I actually look online, there is some hope in that it says that the JFP1 ninth pin is reserved. So hopefully um, that means good news for me and I guess I'll just have to see and, and continue to build this. So on to the graphics card and attempting to do cable management that oof, may or may not look good. We'll see. After gathering all the necessary information, I proceeded to attach all my cables, including the CPU fan, power supply, SATA cables for the hard drive and to power other components, and the pre-installed case cables for the front ports. Finally, I opened up the NVIDIA graphics card, mounted the graphics card into the case, and then performed some basic cable management in the back of my case so that, you know, I had a sanity of mind. After plugging in the graphics card, it was time to power it on. I collected a keyboard, a mouse, and an old monitor to see if the PC would boot, and here's what happened. <sighs> Alright, so here it is. I'm about to power on. A little nervous here, and uh, let's just see what happens. All right, good news, good news. All right, so as you can see, the BIOS is up here. That means good news. Uh, I think I've done everything right, and now is time to properly configure the uh, Windows environment. All right, so day three here, it's time to install Windows, load drivers, and install my applications that I use. So I'm gonna go ahead and install Windows onto this flash drive here and install it onto my M.2 SSD and get up and running. So this is the last day. Hopefully I can get everything configured and running and then finally be using this thing. I proceeded to create a bootable media flash drive with Windows 10. I inserted the USB into the USB port, booted it from the drive, and then proceeded to follow all the instructions to set up the base installation of Windows 10 Pro. After Windows 10 was installed, I went back to the BIOS and ensured my XMP Profile 1 was configured to maximum output for the RAM. And then I went on to MSI's website and installed all of the drives for my specific motherboard model. All right, so Windows is set up. I have my drivers installed. It's time to download all of the applications and I can do that offline. So um, yeah, let's do a quick setup overview.
So like that, my PC build geared towards cybersecurity is finally finished. And ultimately, I'm gonna answer and address some questions before ending this video, probably some questions that I'll end up getting. Uh, and so starting off with why Windows? For all of my complaints that I've had over the last several years of Windows, ultimately, I'm still locked into its ecosystem for a few reasons. And I chose Windows as my host operating system. Uh, for number one, because I'm still locked into the Adobe Creative Cloud ecosystem uh, that has their video editing, uh, Photoshop, and everything else, all their programs. Now, ultimately, I could have either chosen to dual boot with my favorite Linux distribution or just use Linux as a base OS and host a Windows 10 VM and have Adobe Creative Cloud in there. I chose not to do either of those options because of a loss in productivity. And ultimately, I feel like I would ultimately just be using Windows because I tend to edit videos often and they take me a while to edit. So I would probably be in the Windows ecosystem. Now, luckily, Windows does now have Windows subsystem for Linux or WSL. So I was able to load in the Ubuntu 2204 distribution, as well as Docker Desktop, which allows you to run containerized applications. So it does what I need to for my development purposes. It's not perfect, but um, yeah, I mean, Windows is still kind of what I'm going with. It's just natively supported for a lot of different programs. Next is the AMD versus Intel and why I chose Intel. Ultimately, it came down to a combination of price, performance, and stability. Uh, for me personally, I am not a dedicated gamer. I don't really game at all. Based off of what I read, AMD has a huge market share in the gaming sector and just has eaten up Intel's market share over the last decade. And uh, for me personally, I just chose something that was price, performance, and just a good combination between the two, and that ended up being Intel. So I chose the i7-3700K because it was a, you know more of a top-of-the-line CPU, but also has integrated graphics, which, again, I need for video editing. For my graphics card, the NVIDIA 3060 Ti, I decided to buy a dedicated graphics card because of my video editing experience, I thought it would be helpful. And I read some articles that said that having a dedicated graphics card isn't necess necessary, but can help you for your video editing. And then finally, what was the overall price of this build? So uh, I ended up buying all of these components on Amazon Prime on Prime Day, and I got a few good discounts. So the final price was $1,801 with all of the discounts. Without the discounts, it was around uh, $1,950. So $150 worth of savings. And overall, I think for 128 gigabytes of RAM, a decent processor, and a decent video graphics card, this build will get me through when I need to for the next coming years. So yeah, I've had a lot of fun building this project. Feel free to leave a comment down below asking questions. I will further elaborate. And well, yeah, until the next time, have a good day.